This video is brought to you by Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. <laughs> Hey, my name is Jobby, and we're looking at the Revel Tech Amazing Yamaguchi, The Joker, and Harley Quinn. Another Batman double review. Coincidentally, we have a double sponsor, Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. Tokyo Treat is a monthly Japanese subscription box full of the latest exclusive and seasonal Japanese candies and snacks, like Japan exclusive Kit Kat, ramen, a bunch of popular stuff. And Sakura Co. is also a monthly Japanese subscription box, but with a focus on authentic traditional Japanese Japanese snacks from Japan's local artisan snack makers, plus one special Japanese tableware every month. Both are delivered straight from Japan to your door, and both boxes have a different theme every month. These are the May boxes, and that's not an out-of-season April Fool's joke. You get May's theme if you order in April, June's theme in May, you get it by now. May's theme for the Tokyo Treat box is Sakura Picnic, which features a strawberry and red bean loaf, pine ame sakura candy, hope I didn't butcher that, and Banana Caramel Kit Kats. The loaf and candy were made exclusively for Tokyo Treat subscribers. And Sakura Co's theme for May is Matcha and Mochi, featuring a lot of matcha-themed snacks and Sakura Co exclusive Sakura Sencha Tea. But what the frick? is Sakura Sencha Tea. There's a booklet included with both boxes explaining everything that's included. They've also got a lot of information on Japanese culture. But the most important information I need is the flavor. In the spirit of the double review, let's try two snacks. Tokyo Treat exclusive candy, adorable. Looks like a lovely piece of soap. Lovely. Not like soap. <laughs> Once you pop, you can't stop. Let's see if it's true. Oh! Mm. Confirmed. Even though I'd love to continue gaining weight on camera, I gotta tell you about the links in the description. Use code JOBBY to get $5 off your first Tokyo Treat order and $5. $5 off your first Sakura Co order. Same code for both links. Thanks once again for supporting the channel, you sensational snack boxes, and for reigniting my Pringles addiction. Thanks a lot. What's the pops and can't stop so check the description for time code so you can watch these reviews in any order you want. But first, we're gonna start with the Clown Prince of Crime. Of course, the character of the Joker needs no introduction. We can't stop hearing about him. But this particular iteration is an original design by Yamaguchi Katsuhisa, the namesake of the line. And right out of the box, I can say that Yamaguchi did an amazing job with it. The painting and sculpting is awesome. This is the kind of Joker I like to see. The kind of Joker that I miss from our cinematic interpretations. Don't get me wrong, I love Heath Ledger's take. But I feel that version ruined the character forever. Every cinematic version going forward wants to be realistic and grungy and what? The frick is that? Not a fan. This figure, however, is a nice mixture of the classic comic book design and also harkens back to the animated series. Gotta love that weird boomerang hair shape. Love how clean he looks as well. Thanks to a somewhat metallic sheen on the purple, the wrinkles are sculpted precisely both on his clothes and his face. Excellent face sculpt, by the way. Ugly as he should be, but not a goddamn demon from hell. I don't like that one either. Sue me. Here's my dirty fingernail for scale. Just to emphasize how impressive impressive the sculpting is here. Really quite small, but full of character. You'll never know if I was gonna say your mom or my dad. And potentially, depending on how my camera captures the footage, the eyes may pop out at you. Not only because of their glossy finish, but because they might be a little misaligned. And that's not an intentional sculpting decision to make him look crazier. Pop the head off, remove this back toupee, and you can see that the gums are a separate piece, really nice, but also his eyeballs are separate pieces that you can actually pose. But how the hell we're gonna do that with my dirty fingernail? You get an included tool, looks more like a dental product and a figure accessory, explains his perfect teeth, and you just get that small side, plug it into the hole on one of those eyeballs, and now you could move it around. But it's not as easy as it sounds. You don't get a lot of space in his skull to move the tool everywhere you need to go. As you can see, that socket gets in the way, so it is extremely hard to line up his eyes correctly. I knew the Joker had mental issues, but while a great idea, not really 
necessarily that great in execution. I think a thinner tool is in order. So yeah, it's a great head scope, which you can switch out for. Jesus, this next fucking disgusting. <laughs> Gotta love those exaggerated Yamaguchi proportions. That's a penis. Switch out his normal face with an, of course, laughing face, which for some reason, I don't like as much as the normal one. Maybe it's the asymmetrical expression. He's giving us that rock brow there. I think it's just personal preference, a bit too anime for my taste, but a solid laughing face regardless. Also features the movable eyes, and for some reason, the eyes are even harder to pose on this head. Seems like the boss socket is thicker here than the normal head. But if you really work for it, something that everyone needs in their consciousness forever. I'm going to combat the <laughs> I don't have contact with Mark Hamill. Thank God for him. And besides the heads, you get a bunch of accessories here, including some alternate hands. You can switch out this pair of fists for a pair of open hands, clawed hands, which allows him to hold this included set of chattering teeth. Doesn't actually chatter though, garbage. And a pair of trigger finger hands, which you can plug this included pair of Tommy guns to. Really snug fit, appreciated. And to give those guns more oomph, you get these included effect parts that plugs right into the tip of the barrel. What a great display but the arsenal doesn't stop there. You get a smaller handgun, which is also compatible with the effect part, and a separate handgun with a bang flag. What a beautiful variety of firearms, but I find it unfair that the Joker has a bunch of guns, but the frickin' Arkham Knight didn't. Check out that review if you haven't. So this figure must have been released before Kyoto forgot what freedom is. Gel many liberal! <laughs> and for his final weapon, I guess, you get a walking stick that he doesn't have the best grip on, but it still looks good, especially with that really nicely sculpted jester head. Am I crazy? Or is one of Joker's nicknames the jester of genocide? Six million bats! <laughs> Joker <laughs> Out of all of his accessories, this pair of speech bubbles have got to be my favorite. You really only need one. That plugs into this included clamp, which plugs into this included joint, and that plugs directly into the figure's back. Again, excellent display, but weirdly engineered because if he's yucking it up, you can't plug in this included stand, which has a hinge joint, hinge joint, hinge joint swivel. You could always plug in this included claw and clamp onto the figure, but nah. So what I like to do, plug the stand into the back, plug the ha 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 into the claw, and clamp that assembly onto the figure. That allows you to get dynamic poses while still having him LMFAO. Hey, editing jobby here. I didn't realize that there's a hole in his pants, so you actually can plug the speech bubble and the stand at the same time. Put my ass! <laughs> that option's not even in the instructions. What's also not in the instructions is a full joint breakdown, which I really would have appreciated, seeing as this figure has an insane <laughs> amount of posability. Ball joint at the head and the base of the neck. Both the head and base of the neck are on dumbbell joints. Allows them to look up that far, Jesus, and look down super far. Every ball joint can be a swivel. Full rotation at the shoulder, a similar situation to the Rebel Tech Arkham Knight that we talked about. Links in the description. Arm moves out. Ball joint at the jacket, strangely enough. This joint is way too loose for where it is because if you don't be careful. Ugh. But combining that with the shoulder rotation allows for some really good backward and forward movement. Ball join at the shoulder, which doubles as his bicep swivel. Ball join at the shoulder of his jacket. Again, if you're not careful, elbow swivel and the hinge joint and ball joint work together to get you a bend at the elbow. Every ball joint. Swivel at the base of the wrist. Hinge joint allows it to move up and down and a swivel where the hand connects. Ball joint at the chest and the waist. Every ball joint. His coattails are on a hinge joint. Swivel. And that allows for a really good arcing back and a really good crunch. Very good side to side as well. Ball joint at the hips. Allows for a down good kick. Swivel the thigh so that it doesn't look weird. And the leg moves back that far. And here's a better look at that thigh swivel. An absolutely beautiful spread. Bend at the knee. Swivel at the base of the ankle. A ball joint where the foot connects every ball joint. A hinge joint allows it to move up and down. A toe bend. And a fantastic ankle pivot. Joker's not known to pull super dynamic action poses. Unless we're talking about the Batman. The good one, not... <laughs> but it's great that you have the option. However, because of the way the figure is is designed, it limits his posability somewhat because it is very easy to break the sculpt in an unappealing way. 
Like the goddamn T-1000. But I wouldn't blame you if you can't help yourself. This thing is fun to handle. Doesn't feel like a wet noodle. So find the poses that work best for you and you should have a good time. And it's about that time to do size comparisons. Here's Figma Matic Economy, SH Monster Arts Godzilla, Transform Element OP Leader, my previous review, the Bingo Toys Wave Man, and the Revel Tech Amazing Yamaguchi Batman. I'll just say Joker stole his cape and call it a day. They look great together regardless. While not my favorite Amazing Yamaguchi figure, it is definitely a strong addition to the line, and I recommend it to any Bat fan. Ah. Links in the description. They don't call him the Clown Prince for nothing. Of course, he pairs well with the Revel Tech Batman, and also the Revel Tech Amazing Yamaguchi Harley Quinn. Let's get into her. Not in that way. Harley Quinn is, of course, the iconic hench girl that has gone through a kind of revival in recent years. For better or for worse, I will always love that classic design. Is it controversial to say that I enjoyed the character more when she was under the thumb of the Joker? Whoop, never mind, that makes me a misogynist. But I still think the painting and the sculpting on this figure is awesome. But if you're gonna radically redesign Harley Quinn, at least keep the classic colors, which they did here. And I made it a point to get this version of the figure rather than the new color version. Those Suicide Squad colors are an eyesore. Yamaguchi Gucci once again exaggerates the proportions here, but not to a disgusting degree. Actually quite appealing. This is one of the best action figure asses I've seen. <laughs> until you move her leg forward, looks kinda weird. Did I say the proportions aren't disgusting? I mean, they aren't until you get to the neck. Doesn't look bad when she's looking straight at you, but when you move it, ah, yeah, wah. Those vat of chemicals really did a number on her. And her pudding. Not zombie. Harley Quinn never fell into a vat of chemicals. That's what the basic bitches know, Suicide Squad. But just like the Joker, you just gotta get it into a right pose as to not break the sculpt in a weird way. And also, like the Joker, her head is removable. Well, her face and her bangs. She also has posable eyes with her very own eye tool. But these are a lot easier to move around. Nothing to get in the way of your tool. So it's a lot more of a pleasant experience to pose her eyes and align them properly. But where's the fun in that? But for such a kooky character, this face is not super expressive. Which is why you can replace it with a smiling face. Or what the box calls an intrigue face. And, uh... What the box calls a surprise face. Or as I like to call it, the rev up your Harley. Oh, <laughs> In addition to all those faces, you get these accessories. Switch out her pair of fists for a pair of peace sign hands, one thumbs up and one pointing, and a pair of grabby hands, which allows her to hold either this bat, man, or this mallet. And both of those weapons are compatible with this sound effect piece. But I disagree with the sound effect. What kind of hitting sound is boof? Is that what they're trying to go for? My internet addicted brain would have preferred bonk. It's on a ball joint. And a swivel. So when you plug it into any of her weapons, you can move it however you want. And just in case you rough her up a bit too much, what are you, the joker? You get a pair of extra wrist pegs, one for each color. But before I forget, you can actually switch out her feet. And replace them with these included roller skates, which don't actually roll, but that's a good thing. Would be annoying to stand her up. And speaking of standing her up, her joints are nice and solid here, so she has no problem standing up on her own. But if you run into some problems, she also comes with a stand. The same exact one that comes with the Joker, which opens up the possibility for a ton of posability. I gotta take off her face to give you a better look at this. A dumbbell ball joint that connects the back of the head to the tip of the neck. Every ball joint can be. The neck's on a hip joint and swivel and taking all of that into account she can look up super far and look down super far this is kind of a psychotic neck design but it works swivel at the pigtails and they're also on a hinge joint full rotation at the shoulder arm moves out ball joint at the bicep and every ball joint can be bend at the elbow elbow swivel swivel at the wrist hinge joint here and a swivel where the wrist connects ball joint at the chest and the waist every ball joint allows for a great arcing back and a great crunch but when you are her back, it's hot as hell. The belt tends to get misaligned. It's just the hovering piece. So all you do is just move it down and it should stay in place. Excellent amount of side to side. Ball joint at the hips allows for a full rotation. Leg moves back that far. A uh, pretty good spread, but if you swivel the thighs, it's a beautiful one. Those stocking swivels are actually ball joints. Knee swivel and a hinge joint and ball joint work together.
together to get you a deep knee bend. Swivel at the base of the ankle, hinge joint, a toe bend, and a swivel where the foot connects, which is, of course, an ankle pivot. Excellent articulation, and unlike the Joker, the sculpt here is not so easy to break, but it's still possible, so mind how you pose it. Size comparison time once again. Here's Monica, Godzilla Prime, the Joker, and Batman. What a great set of figures, but if I had to pick a favorite, I think I like the Harley Quinn figure a little bit more than the Joker, just because it's harder to break the sculpt so you can be a lot more free when you pose her. And also, I like women. Sorry, boys. Both are excellent, though. Links in the description once again. Get them if you're thinking of starting your own circus. Or just look in the mirror. I've always thought my life was a tragedy. But now I realize it's bad comedy.